Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Anthony Simonetti and I'm with New Horizons of Southern California. And I'm also here today with Scott Stewart from Red Hat who will be your presenter. Before we started, just want to take care of some housekeeping items. First off, I wanted to let you know that I'll be monitoring the question box, so feel free to ask any questions you'd like. Uh, but please be aware that we will be holding questions till the end, so Scott will answer your questions at that time. And before uh, we get to the presentation, just wanted to introduce New Horizons to some of you in case you aren't familiar with us. But we're the worldwide training, provide, uh, worldwide training leader with uh, flexible learning solutions, including online live, which is very similar to what you're seeing today, where you actually have a live instructor that you can interface with using uh, questions or video conferencing as well. And we have 2,100 classrooms across 60 different countries. Uh, we do 3 million student days of training a year. And we have a lot of vendor partnerships, not just with New Red Hat, uh, but many of the other technologies you might work with, all the way from end-user uh, end desktop applications up to the te uh, top technical training and even some business skills such as PMP and Six Sigma. So with that, I want to turn it over to Scott Stewart, who works at Red Hat Corporate. And Scott, take it away. Yeah, thanks, Anthony. Uh, and uh, good morning, good afternoon to everybody on the phone. Uh, just a little bit about me and we'll get started. Uh, uh, my name is Scott Stewart. I uh, work in our Red Hat training uh, department. I have the uh, pleasure to work with uh, Anthony and the rest of the uh, New Horizons team uh, in, in North America uh, so we can help bring you guys the right uh, training offerings for our system admin training around Red Hat Enterprise Linux, uh, as well as other technologies that we have uh, like OpenStack and uh, other cloud offerings, as well as some uh, uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux add-ons uh, that will help you with systems management uh, and performance tuning, things of that nature. Um, uh, next page, uh, Anthony, we'll go and look at the, uh, the agenda real quickly. Uh, so, from uh, you know, from an agenda standpoint, I uh, just want to give uh, you know, a brief introduction about me, which I've already done. Uh, and then I want to talk a little bit about uh, Rail 7. And uh, what I want to do with Rail 7 is to, is to give you some uh, some key uh, new product enhancements and differentiators and improvements that we've made over previous uh, operating systems we've had, like our Rail 6, uh, as well as how we uh, integrate uh, you know with virtual machines, as well as how we integrate integrate with the cloud. So I want to spend uh, a, a lot of my t a lot of time today uh, talking about some of these improvements with Rail 7 uh, that you guys can take advantage of and start uh, start looking at uh, as you kind of get ready uh, to migrate uh, your servers, uh, you know, both bare metal and, and virtual servers uh, over to uh, the new operating system. And then uh, after I talk, uh, you know, give kind of a high level presentation on, on those uh, product improvements, uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, our Rail 7 training offerings, our Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 training offerings uh, in the system admin curriculum, uh, as well as some stuff we have uh, in, in, on the cloud side of the house, uh, and talk a little bit about some of the training paths that we have that you guys have the ability to take advantage of uh, uh, you know, with your, um, your account reps at New Horizons, uh, and then talk a little bit about our certifications. As you know, our certifications are award-winning and, uh, and and highly coveted for anybody who's using uh, Linux in the data center. So I want to talk a little bit about that as well, and then uh, at the end we'll, 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 we'll you know, do a little Q and A. So uh, next slide, Anthony. Okay. Uh, so as you can tell, our marketing folks uh, put together this uh, stunning uh, visual here on uh, how Red Hat is redefining. Uh, the enterprise operating system with Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7. And it's interesting uh, for those of you who've used uh, Linux, uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, uh, for many years. Um, if you think about um, about four years ago when we brought out Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6 to the market, uh, at that point in time, uh, the differences between Rail 5 and Rail 6 uh, there was not that many. Right, it's uh, at that point at the end of the life cycle of uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 5, we had introduced uh, KVM uh, or Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization and included that in the operating system. We've made a, a, a lot of other significant changes to the life cycle 
of Red Hat Enterprise Linux 5. So when Red Hat Linux, uh, Enterprise Linux 6 came out, uh, it was very seamless for those of you who were looking to upgrade between the two operating systems. Uh, however, um, I'll give you some background. Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7, there are hundreds of new features. Uh, not enough time on this call to go into uh, the bulk of those new features and, 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 and improvements uh, in, that, uh, in, in the new operating system. Uh, we do have a tech preview, preview that's available on our site, and it's literally 70 pages long with the new features of Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7. Uh, but kind of what I want to focus on today uh, is you know you know the tools that we have that are going to make your jobs easier as a system systems administrators uh, with uh, using the tools that are in, inside in, uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7, uh, and the focus there is uh, you know around flexibility, stability, and certainty. Uh, you know we we use um, uh, you know the reason why a lot of uh, uh, of uh, Department of Defense customers and, and customers in the financial you know, services sector use our operating system is the fact that uh, you know, we provide high-level military-grade security. And what I mean by that is that uh, our security is, uh, is, is, is you know, up to DOD spec, as well as uh, mission-critical reliability uh, to, uh, um, from, um, you know, from a, a downtime perspective, limited downtime. So, you know, crit mission critical applications run on Red Hat Enterprise Linux. All right, uh, look at the highlights. Uh, what, a few things I'm going to talk about today. Uh, one thing I'm going to talk about that's new to Linux, uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, is Linux containers. So, if you're looking for, you know, uh, you know, flexibility by, you know, being able to, uh, you know, have lightweight application isolation, uh, Linux. Uh, Linux containers is what we do, or what we're using uh, to help do that. Uh, and I'll spend a little time talking about Linux containers. I'm also going to talk about when the improved Windows interoperability. Um, as we all know, you know, Red Hat has a uh, certificate management and um, uh, a service as well, um, as well as uh, you know, as well as integration with um, identity management tools. Uh, however, uh, the default uh, is always going to be Active Directory. Uh, so we have uh, greater interoperability uh, with, uh, with Active Directory. And I'll spend some time talking about how we do that. Uh, and then, you know, scalable file systems. So, you know, we're, we're able now with Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 uh, with our uh, default file system, FXS, uh, to go all the way up to uh, 500 terabytes of data. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, you know, tuning and performance and systems management. So, you know, we have uh, you know better efficiency now uh, from a performance standpoint. Uh, we have a new product, uh, a new uh, product uh, system D that's in uh, in Red Hat. Make it easier for you to deploy systems, as well as some system management features. Uh, uh, like Open LMI, and I'll talk a little bit about Open LMI in a few slides as well uh, for better central, centralized management. Okay, uh, just a little background on Linux containers. As you know, Linux containers are, uh, are is an open source project that is not um, owned by Red Hat, right? We have there's uh, there who uh, contribute to this open source uh, project called Linux containers. One uh, of interest that's really hot name in IT right now is Docker. And we offer Docker support uh, for Linux containers, um, both from a hosted and non-hosted standpoint uh, in our operating system. But the, the value around Linux containers, um, you know, it, it, makes it makes it easier for you to deploy uh, and become more portable for your applications across the hosted system. So this is like... Uh, and it also isolates the application, so it's not dependent on one OS. So if you have multiple OSs running, uh, you know, rail four through or rail five through rail seven, um, it allows you to do that on the host, on the host operating system. Yeah, you know, we do that through uh, uh, C groups, control groups, uh, you know, kernel namespaces, and, uh, and security enhanced Linux. So next slide, I'll go in more detail about you know. Uh, containers from uh, from a host and image based uh, standpoint. So uh, hosted uh, hosted containers, um, you know, RHEL seven supports it uh, supports the hosted containers, um, 
I mean, really what we're doing is carving into secure, uh, secure containers here. Um, you know, it makes it, it makes it easier, more portable, uh, easier for DevOps. This is where kind of DevOps roles have uh, become more prevalent in the space. So, uh, you know, through hosted containers, but more importantly, image-based containers, uh, DevOps uh, is able to uh, isolate applications inside these small containers on top of Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7. Um, we also do uh, training on containers in our system admin classes, and I'll talk about that in a few slides as well. So, you know, the beauty of containers is that uh, if you're looking at Rail 7 or, or another instance of uh, uh, of rail in your environment um, it can be supported and deployed both on bare metal and in uh, virtual environments. All right, next slide for me, Anthony. All right, I uh, spent a little time about uh, Windows integration um, with uh, Active Directory. So uh, there's two ways to do that, right? Direct integration and indirect integration. So I'll talk about the one that's used less uh, prevalent, uh, it's not as prevalent, uh, which is the direct integration. But we also support it, right, through uh, SSD. Um, it allows you to connect the, the client, the Red Hat Enterprise Linux client, client into the Windows domain, the, the, the Win, uh, Active Directory Force, um, with a technology we built into uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux called uh, Real MD, and then uh, next slide, which is more prevalent, more prevalent usage uh, in, in what we see for our, our customers going forward, is the indirect um, integration. And we do the indirect integration uh, by building out, um, you know, uh, SSD into Active Directory. We also build out uh, an identity management server which is going to allow for centralized uh, native Linux management um, through all your clients, through multiple clients. So, uh, you know, the usage of Active Directory, uh, the indirect usage is definitely most common, most time in, uh, to, to have that interoperability um, requirement that our customers have who are using Active Directory in, in, in uh, data centers where there's, there's a significant Microsoft installs as well as uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux installs. So this is definitely a new feature um, where we have uh, identity management uh, uh, coming into play and talking directly with the Active Directory uh, uh, forest. All right, next slide. Uh, when we're talking about file systems, uh, the choice of file systems, uh, you definitely have the ability to to go uh, in multiple directions, but one of the, the benefits of the file systems is uh, through um, XFS, which is the system default, which uh, most of you who are using Linux systems are very familiar with. I, you know, in RHEL 6, we had support only up to 16 terabytes. We're definitely looking at the, the growing enterprise uh, customer um, and would support up to now 500 terabytes of data. <laughs> Uh, when I talk about you know, choice of file systems, there are other ways. Uh, ex, uh, ext4 uh, is, uh, is, there's uh, scalability there, uh, enhanced scalability there from 16 terabytes to 50 terabytes with ext4. Also, uh, there's, uh, you know, there's drivers to allow access to older versions like ext and ex3. And also in our tech preview as well as ButterFS, um, for some of you guys who are, who are interested in ButterFS, there's also support up to 50 terabytes as well. All right, next slide. All right, uh, looking at performance enhancements with RHEL 7. So we've spent a lot of time, uh, you know, making it easier for you to tune your systems uh, and make sure you get optimal performance uh, inside of RHEL 7. Um, We've got uh, you know built-in performance profiles, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, we also have monitoring uh, and performance um, enhanced monitoring capabilities with uh, with a product we have at Enterprise uh, in Rail Seven called Copilot, and also with Thermostat. So, and also I'll spend a little more time on the fine tuning because obviously uh, you know everybody who's responsible for uh, the management of uh, a, a Red Hat server. Uh, optimizing those servers' performance uh, from a usage standpoint, uh, it's going to vary, right, between the types of servers or if you're supporting workstations as well. 
So we have a, a product uh, inside of Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 called Tune D. And basically what that is is that uh, it's a solution to help with performance and fine tuning, uh, tuning for minimal and maximal energy savings, right? So if you want to, if you've got a, let's say, for example, you've got a, a Linux build on a mobile workstation, you know, obviously the, the you know, the uses there would be different than, a, than a, your standard system with bare metal. So we make it easier with this interface with 2D uh, to optimize um, or, man, or adjust uh, the usage needed or the energy needed to, to run that workstation versus running the server. So you have the ability to do that uh, and, and, and do it remotely with your servers as well. And there's also a technology that we had before in our grid product uh, called Tuna. Uh, that has an enhanced, uh, you know, GUI feature or uh, interface that's going to enable you to have uh, some of the additional advanced tuning capabilities, and also uh, for allow you to, to, you know, to to go find where those hot spots are, where there's going to be potential issues, where it might result in a service call, uh, but also uh, allow you to to proactively load balance um, using that tool uh, to help uh, help. Uh, your, your performance um, on your systems. Okay, look at the next slide for me. So yeah, so looking at, um, these are just uh, screenshots of a couple of technologies we have that, uh, once again, um, for optimal performance. So we have a, a product called Performance Copilot. And what uh, Copilot, oops, sorry, uh, what Copilot's gonna allow for is uh, a centralized management across all your rail environments. So you can take a look at your uh, your rail um, your rail infrastructure, and you can go and view uh, where you know uh, you know what the performance or the usage on all the servers across multiple environments. You can do this in a one you know, kind of a, a through a GUI interface through a you know kind of a one time uh, through a pane of glass, one pane of glass, I should say. Uh, and also from uh, you know, from your your, your JVMs, uh, there is a thermostat, and a thermostat is is definitely a, a allows um, for you for a, a, you know, for additional enhanced performance management uh, and in instrumentation through thermostat. This is relatively new and up to uh, to uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux uh, with this product as well. But uh, all in all, it gives you a a, a centralized um, management tool. Uh, or, or, or a tool that's in a central man, uh, location. So if you're looking at the, your your set of Apache you know, web servers that are running on Linux, you can you can optimize uh, through that central tool to, to make sure, or these central tools, to make sure that uh, you're getting optimal performance out of you know, all of your 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 real instances, both uh, virtual and bare metal. All right, let's take a look at the next slide. All right. Um, so another enhancement, and based off a lot of customer feedback, is uh, we've made uh, we've made some significant performance improvements um, in installation, boot up, um, you know, prioritizing what you want to boot up first inside of Red Hat Enterprise Linux Seven. So uh, we've got uh, a, 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 you know a, the tools that uh, allow you uh, to speed your deployment. You know, so you can uh, you, know, you can push out these boxes faster uh, than than ever before uh, that we've had those capabilities in, in, in any other version of Linux. Um, one thing that's of most interest, if if any of you guys are on the phone uh, who are coming over who have also supported uh, Unix systems in the past, and you've made some Unix to Linux migrations, uh, one theme that uh, has been asked for from you know, almost every single one of those Unix to Linux migration customers is in place upgrades. Um, you have the ability to do that within Rail 7 now. Um, also, you know, prioritizing the critical services that your 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 customers or your users are going to need at startup. Uh, and one thing that's uh, interesting as well, we also allow within Rail 7 uh, for you to easily customize and create, uh, or excuse me, create custom images install images so you can push out um, the way you're comfortable in pushing out these images out uh, to the systems. Um, and and the, all in all, the goal with uh, improving performance and installation is uh, is uh, to make your jobs easier and, uh, and, and less cumbersome at the boot process. 
So looking at the next page, um, the product we use uh, to for centralized management and faster boot up is a product called System D that's in, inside of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Um, you know what System D does it essentially manages your real seven all the way out to the cloud. Um, prior, it helps you prioritize the services from startup. So if you're looking at you know you know whatever your uh, you know, obviously, inside a server, there are services and uh, and applications and uh, and access point access to, uh, to to applications that are needed first. Uh, and and there's some uh, services that uh, can be uh, you know become accessible later on during the cycle. Um, so what system D allows you to do is prioritize, prioritize which services to start first, right? So if you want to give your uh, your administrators access to the internet first. You know, you can boot your 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 Apache uh, uh, or your default um, you know, uh, browser first to uh, to access for you know for those administrators to get access to the internet first. Um, and then you know one another improvement too is that uh, there's a lot of processes you can do processes now in parallel, right? So if there's uh, there's there's services that, and processes that uh, it previously you had to run one at a time now they have the ability to run. Uh, at the same time in parallel with other processes. Um, and also you still have the ability to use your own custom scripts or startup um, through uh, uh, SysV and LSV uh, uh, from a scripting standpoint. All right, um, one enhancement, and, and I apologize, I won't be able to go in too much detail about this, but uh, you know, as I mentioned before, uh, you know, deployment uh, of in-place upgrades from RHEL 6 to RHEL 7. Yeah, we've got a couple of tools uh, that are built in that allow for that. Uh, you know, you can, but the, bit, the biggest benefit uh, using these tools uh, inside of RHEL 7 is that uh, you can do this, do, you do in-place upgrades from RHEL 6 to RHEL 7 uh, without doing a reinstall. So you know the ease of upgrading systems is now greatly improved. The ease to boot the systems is now greatly improved. So you definitely have the ability uh, using uh, for for the in-place upgrades through a couple of tools called pre-upgrade assisted and upgrade tool uh, that are taught in our classes as well uh, from a, uh, in our more advanced system administration classes in the RHCE or Red Hat certified uh, engineer track. Um, but uh, this is definitely, uh, you know, designed based off of customer feedback. So, you know, we, we definitely listen to our customers in terms of improvements that our, co uh, our customers are going to want to see. And obviously, uh, you know, the biggest bulk of our uh, Linux uh, uh, install is not from, uh, is not from uh, Windows to, uh, to Linux uh, migrations, but are from Unix to Linux migrations. So this is definitely a first. It's something new. Uh, for users who are also who are looking to migrate and or excuse me looking to upgrade uh, those um, those uh, Unix to Linux during that Unix to Linux migration phase to, to upgrade from from RHEL six to RHEL seven. This the in place upgrades are now available uh, using these uh, these tools as well. All right, um, Open L LMI. So this is a new tool. Uh, and I won't go and you know, go through this chart line by line here. Uh, it's definitely uh, you know a systems management tool that's uh, built into uh, Red Hat Enterprise uh, Seven. Um, you know what it is? It, it's designed to help streamline deployment from one common system for systems management and monitoring of RHEL. Um, it also allows for additional automation and remotely deploy and, and remove services as needed. So. You know, it's a, it's like I said, it's a system management and monitoring tool. It's based on open standards. Um, uh, you know, definitely designed for uh, you know uh, x86 architecture. Um, and it, they're they're unified tools, and they support uh, traditional Linux tools like CLI scripts and SW tools. Um, one example is if you wanted to create. Uh, uh, a RAID 5 array using a remote, a remote server, you'd have that ability to uh, to do that very easily through this management tool called OpenLMI. OpenLMI is, uh, is a uh, community project as well, and uh, it's something that Red Hat has brought to the table to the uh, to the open source community. Um, so it's something that if you want to go look at OpenLMI from uh, you know from a, 
a pre version standpoint um, to, to get more familiar with you know, the capabilities within the management and monitoring tools. So you definitely have that ability as well. All right, next slide. So one thing that uh, we our customers also ask for improvements on is uh, for them to be able to use the latest and greatest uh, from an open source architecture standpoint. So we have a, a tool called Red Hat Software Collections. Um, you know what's designed for is to deliver uh, the latest stable versions of developer tools, of, of uh, programming languages, and databases, uh, so users can create a modern application set. As you, as you know with open source and a lot of the projects with an open source is you update very quickly, right? So we want to make sure through our Red Hat software collections that uh, we have the ability to uh, bring those in-house and give, the, give you the capabilities to use those new latest and greatest cutting edge tools that are available in open source in your uh, enterprise um, environments or, or your, 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 your test environments for that matter. So you know you the benefits are you get to choose your runtime versions that are best suited for your projects. Absolutely, um, you know you can you know you get an enhanced stability uh, by you know with side by side versioning, and you also get support on these Red Hat software collections, um, you know for for three years, and these are available absolutely in, in uh, with Rail Seven. All right, so you know so. Before I kind of go into to training and certification, I, I definitely gave you a kind of high-level preview of some of the enhancements and improvements that are there, there inside Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7. Um, you know, what I would suggest if uh, for those of you who haven't started testing um, on Rail 7 from a migration standpoint, um, to take a look at the tech preview on the Red Hat.com site uh, to get, get more details about the specific tools that you guys are most interested in. Um, and get more background and on some of the stuff I've, I've talked about. Uh, System D is very uh, important um, tool, uh, just like OpenLMI and uh, Linux containers. Obviously, Docker support is something that we're, we have with Rel7. You know, Docker is one of those hot names in the uh, in the in the in, in the open source space right now. You know, probably you know, second to uh, to OpenStack, right? The OpenStack projects that are out there. Um, but uh, I encourage you to go and take uh, and, and take a longer uh, look at some of these technologies. Uh, but also, uh, if you're looking at it and you want to test and train on these technologies, um, you know I'm going to talk about now the offerings that we have uh, for you uh, that are designed uh, for you know wh whatever your experience is on the command line from uh, hey, new, new to Linux. Yep. Before we get into the training part, I have a quick question from one of our attendees that says. Uh, if you could say there's one major main difference between previous versions of uh, RHEL and the current version of RHEL, uh, based on the presentation we had so far, what would you say that is? I think the support of Linux containers um, is going to be most important because it, it's uh, containers are such a new uh, technology, and they're definitely uh, if you talk to uh, to a lot of the software. Um, vendors, uh, containers, or something that everybody's looking to support, right? Uh, so, you know, having the ability to support software containers and sitting on top of uh, the host OS um, and being able to, uh, you know, to go, you know, being able to um, to support, you know, multiple operating systems for whatever uh, container you want to set up uh, and, and, and develop and, and run those applications or, or something that is new and definitely improves um, uh, your ability as a system administrator and the ability of um, users to, uh, to to access that information better in a, in, a, in, in a different type of environment. So Linux containers, I think, are, uh, are you know from an industry standpoint, are definitely most important. Um, you know, with the support and Red Hat Enterprise Linux like Seven. And somebody in security might have a different answer than that, but uh, from uh, you know from what we hear from customers and uh, and how how accepted containers have been in the marketplace, um, Linux containers are definitely uh, important to, uh, you know growth uh, in our customer base with Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Thanks, Scott. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about the offerings that are available uh, from a, from a curriculum and certification standpoint. So next slide for me, Anthony. 
So just to give you some background on the ways we uh, train our students, all right, so, uh, so I'm, I'm expecting several of you on the phone um, who have gone, gone to a New Horizons Center or taken a remote class for Red Hat Enterprise Linux uh, you know, from, our, from our friends at New Horizons. Uh, so the way we train is a little bit different than some other technologies you may have been trained on in the past. Uh, we spent a great deal of time inside of the, uh, the classroom uh, for each of our students to be hands-on, right? So all of our, cl our classes are greater than 60% lab to lecture. So we want our students to be hands-on. And the reason why we do that is that, you know, we want uh, you to kind of maximize um, the retention of the skills that you're learning in the class so you can apply back on the job uh, once you finish class at, uh, on that following Monday. So the way we teach is different, a little bit different from, um, you know, others in the industry. And, you know, in terms of another component, which is, uh, you know, kind of works hand-in-hand with -hand our curriculum, is the way we, we certify our customers, right? Uh, our certification exams, for those, those of you on the phone who have, uh, you know, taken a Red Hat exam before in the past, it's a little bit different than some other technologies you may have uh, taken, you know, from Microsoft to Cisco or, uh, or et cetera. Uh, but our, our exams are performance-based, right? We, we want you uh, to be able to apply, uh, you know, apply the skills you learn to be a, a certified system administrator in as close to a real-world environment as possible. So if you wanted to be a Red Hat certified system administrator, you will need to be able to configure, troubleshoot, and attach a, a, a production a, a server to into a production environment. Um, and it's a time test as well, so it's very comprehensive, it's hands-on, there's no multiple choice, there's no simulations, it's really you either know it or you don't. So uh, those are our curriculum, uh, like I said, designed uh, to help you uh, retain um, what you're learning in class and apply it, you know, once you get back to your job. And uh, we're going to be very difficult and challenging on our exams. Um, we want you. We want to make sure that if you're going to be an administrator for, for Red Hat Enterprise Linux, you, you're able to, to accomplish the tasks that a system administrator is going to be asked to do in a real-world environment. So next slide. Um, so just to give you a little background on curriculum, you know, there's different areas where we train people on, right? So there's different. You know, as Red Hat has grown as a company, we've gone from just a Linux company to a cloud company. Uh, a middleware company um, in, in, in tools to support our, our platform products as well. So we've got, uh, uh, from a JBoss standpoint, uh, we've got administration uh, training uh, to administer the, uh, the JBoss Enterprise platform. We've got middleware developer training for, for those of you who are out there using uh, Red Hat, uh, excuse me, JBoss uh, developer tools. Uh, but from, uh, you know, from a Linux standpoint, we have a very wide spectrum of classes uh, that we're teaching on Rail 7 now. So I'm going to spend a little time about uh, talking about our, our, our core system administration and touch at a high level our advanced system administration classes and cloud classes as well. Uh, ways to train. Uh, we have a variety of ways to train as well. Uh, you know, we run classes in, uh, in a large variety of New Horizon centers from a live instructor-led standpoint. We also have the ability uh, through remote classroom using online live through New Horizons to connect you if you want to remote into a live classroom. And we also offer virtual classes as well as if you've got a, a group of individuals uh, that are on a project and want to get trained all at the same time, we can offer on-site training as well. And exams, we have multiple ways to get an exam. We have uh, exams delivered in the classroom uh, at the end of the week of a class, and also we have an uh, individual exam session, uh, which is essentially uh, you know, like uh, a test uh, as a key uh, exam testing station that sits inside the testing centers at, uh, at a variety of New Horizons um, and other places across North America where you can go schedule exam at your own time after you've um, taken the class, done a lot of practical application on the product, and go back and, 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 and attempt the exam. You can take the exams on your time, right? You can schedule those uh, up to uh, 11 months and 29 days in advance, right? Uh, they, they, these vouchers last for a year. So looking, uh, going forward and talking a little bit about core system administration, uh, here's a look at our um, learning paths uh, for, for the Red Hat Certified System Administrator uh, designed for standalone system administrators and then the Red Hat Certified Engineer designed for um, 
uh, network administrators and senior level system administrators. So starting left to right, uh, if you have a background that's new to Linux, maybe you're looking at Linux and virtual environments for the first time, and you need some background to do uh, system administration, um, uh, you're going to start at uh, the, the, the bottom of our stack, which is system admin, uh, system admin 1. Um, and then if you want to continue to become certified, we have a continuation of system admin 1 and system admin 2, and then uh, proceeding further to system admin 3. So it's a fairly straightforward track for somebody who is new to Linux uh, or has limited Linux background and wants to go through our training, uh, our track. System admin 1, 2, and 3 is a, is a natural progression. Um, for those of you who have uh, Linux backgrounds, right, you may have uh, may have two years, you may have four years of administration. Um, you're still uh, you're, you're a standalone system administrator on, in, during your day job. Uh, we have a rapid track class for those of you. So you, you don't need to learn the command line from scratch for a lot of cases. You can go directly into a, a rapid track class, which is RH200, um, and get you know, the information that's being taught in System Admin 1 and 2 and obviously taught very fast uh, in that type of environment. It's really designed for people who don't need that basic um, system administration. Um, you don't need to go on that at a high level and you have a lot of familiarity with the command line. So kind of moving forward too to uh, the more senior level Linux administrators that are out there. Uh, for those of you who have you know, five plus years experience on the command line, maybe you're, maybe you're coming over from a Unix background and, and, and supporting both Unix and Linux servers, uh, the, uh, this, you can go directly into uh, System Admin 3 uh, and then go proceed in uh, from the exams as well from there. And let's say you, you're an existing Red Hat uh, certified engineer in RECE. We also offer a certification lab. And this is a really interesting class. And um, it's very similar to uh, if you've taken mentored learning at uh, a New Horizons facility. The same concept. We've got uh, all the labs that are available in System Admin 1, 2, or 3 are going to be available in this class. And the instructor, as opposed to uh, teaching concepts or teaching about these new tools, um, you're going to have all the labs to do it on your own. But the, the instructor is going to act more as a mentor as opposed to acting as a, an, uh, a traditional instructor. So you know you get 32 hours of lab access during the week to go in and, and hammer through all these labs. Make sure you're prepared and prepped uh, to attempt the uh, the RHEL 7 version of the RHCE exam. So I'd encourage you, if you anybody on the phone is an existing RHCE, uh, to look at this class if you're looking to go get recertified on the latest operating system. All right, look at the next slide. So just kind of breaking down a little bit more detail because our system admin track, uh, system admin one, two, and three, are in, in the two rapid in the rapid track class are four most popular classes. Um, so system admin one, we, we we redesigned this from Rail six. So Rail six was really more of a had a GUI focus. Uh, it really was talking to a lot of win, uh, Windows professionals who wanted to use and do the tasks needed for basic system administration uh, via GUI versus command line. We really changed that around to do more of a command line focused approach. So you know, this is based off the feedback from our customers who even if they're new to Linux, they want to go in directly start learning the command line from day one. So we spend uh, the first three days of this class uh, in, on you know, learning the command line and the last two days on basic system administration and scripting. Um, system admin two, is a continuation. So the, uh, the system admin skills you learned in uh, system admin one, this is, uh, system admin two is a continuation of those skills. So you're learning new things and designed um, to provide more level two uh, system administration skills um, to the student. And then the rapid track, just like I, you know, I said before, it's, it's our, you know, our interpretation of, uh, of a boot camp, right? Except uh, it's taught very quickly. Uh, the content from System Admin 1 and 2 are combined and taught within four days as opposed to, uh, to eight days. The next slide. So the REC track, um, this is where you're going to get uh, the System Admin 3. This is where you're going to get and learn more about the tools I was talking about earlier, like System D, like Open uh, LMI. Um, you know, look, looking more on the file systems, more on the scripting capabilities so you can uh, you know, be a, be uh, be better at uh, managing and, and deploying uh, Linux systems to the network. 
So System Admin 3 is really designed, like I said before, for somebody who's got four to five years plus of um, command line experience and, and experience as a Linux administrator. Um, but it, it's also a natural progression after you take the first two System Admin classes. You know, we've got uh, you know dollar savings for you if you buy you know bundles of classes like System Admin One and Two or System Admin One, Two, and Three, um, or the Rapid Track and System Admin Three if you're looking to get your RHC. So this is uh, System Admin Three is definitely it's probably the most um, outside of System Admin Three and System Admin One of the 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 more the most where the most comprehensive changes were made in terms of the Rail Six and Rail Seven version. Um, it's really receiving a lot of high scores uh, throughout the community of, uh, of, of students who've taken this class as well. So I encourage you, um, you know, if you've taken or in process of taking uh, some of the RHCSA track classes to look at System Admin 3 to continue your education on, on Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And I, like I said before, you know, I talked, I talked about the, the certification lab. Uh, it's really important. It's a really hands-on class um, and designed for people who are looking to recertify for their RHC. Okay, on the next slide, just look quickly at some of the other offerings we have on top of the RHC. Uh, we have uh, server hardening. So I mentioned er uh, earlier in the presentation that uh, you know, military grade security is important to us. You know, obviously it's important to everybody on the phone, security is. So what we did to design this course, um, we build this server hardening class uh, to, uh, to help you with your hardening of your systems up to DOD spec. So, uh, RH413 is the SKU for this one, but it's been a very popular class. We've had it out in the market for about nine months now. Um, we also have uh, uh, storage classes. Uh, we also have uh, um, a Satellite 5 class, and also we have a brand new Red Hat uh, Network Satellite 6 administration class as well. Uh, there are two, two additional classes, and then we have our performance tuning that's going to you know, it is right now it's being piloted on Rail 7 to take advantage of some of those um, tools we have uh, for advanced performance tuning. Uh, on the cloud side of the house, uh, you know, obviously one of the hot hot uh, names or products in the industry right now is OpenStack. Uh, so we also offer OpenStack administration class, and we also have uh, classes. Uh, um, that's uh, kind of sit on top of that for, for Neutron and uh, some of the tools inside of OpenStack. So if you're an RHCSA or have that level of skill or a, a Linux system administrator and being asked to look at OpenStack as a, as a product uh, for your, um, your, you know, your, your cloud environments um, or infrastructure as a service uh, products, uh, you know, OpenStack, we teach an uh, OpenStack administration class that you guys you know, can definitely take a look at uh, through New Horizons. Uh, we also have a virtualization class. We also have a uh, uh, cloud storage class for our storage server product and, um, and our hybrid cloud management um, product, uh, which is called CloudForge. We, off, we offer uh, you know, training across the um, as-a-service um, products that, uh, that are key in, in, uh, to building out uh, you know, our private, public, or, uh, or hybrid cloud environment. Okay, uh, next slide, let's take a little uh, look at our certifications. So, uh, you know, I talked a lot about the RHCSA and RHCE. Just to give you some real numbers um, about where uh, new certified professionals run or system administrator or Red Hat certified engineer. Um, the RHCSA is designed for the standalone uh, system administrator, and the engineer is designed for the senior level and network administrators that are. That, uh, that are in your environments. Uh, so the, the ones are who, uh, of you who are responsible for the entire Red Hat network at your, uh, at your company, um, RHCE is, is, is should, should be a goal that you want to aspire to from a certification standpoint. So on the next slide, on top of uh, the RHCE, we have uh, done, done a lot of redesigning of our, our Red Hat certified architect requirements. Uh, before it was really straight laced. You had to pass five exams and they're all platform level or system administration type um, classes. But we do understand that uh, you're wearing a lot uh, some different hats now, especially if you're working with uh, or virtual uh, working with virtualization, if you're working with um, 
um, the clouds. We we have um, rolled uh, in the the class requirements, or I should say, grown. But we still have the requirement you have to pass five upper level exams before you're in your RCA. Uh, but we extended the reach more to include uh, some uh, the the OpenStack exam, the OpenShift exam for platform as a service, um, to include even JBoss administration. Uh, there's a certified JBoss administrator that will qualify for you know one of the credentials needed to earn your RHCA. So you have a lot more a lot more ability to choose on what classes you want to take next and what exams you want to take next after you get to your RCE. So there's definitely a, a wide variety of ways you're going to go. So if you want to specialize in cloud, there's cloud offerings. If you want to specialize in, in uh, data center administration, there, there's offerings there. If you want to specialize on security, your know, security certifications are, are there as well. All right, that is, uh, that is what I had for you today. Um, and I, I thank you for, for listening, and, I, and we'll turn the floor over to questions. So I have a couple questions right now. Uh, one of them is, when will be the release of the book for RHEL 7? Um, are you talking about that, that being available on Amazon? I'm assuming so. So RHEL 7... You know, books on Rail 7, they typically, you know, take about 90 days after launch. So I, my expectation, Red Hat doesn't produce those, right? So a lot of the, you know, a lot of the, the books you see on, uh, on Linux are produced by third parties. Uh, I really can't answer the time frame, but historically, you know, when we introduce a new operating system, the books that are available for you to, you know, to, uh, you know, complement uh, your your learning on this operating system are usually available about 90 days out. So I would anticipate that be, you know, very soon before a real seven book kind of hits the shelves at Amazon. We have a question that says. How do I get RHCI and RHCX experience or certification? I have seven yeah. years experience as a trainer and also have certification on RHEL five and six. Okay, um, you, you, that would be something that's handled uh, through our. We have an instructor onboarding program. Uh, so if you're interested in being a Red Hat Enterprise, uh, Red Hat uh, certified instructor and examiner. Um, you can reach out. Uh, you can reach out to us directly on that. Um, uh, my email is easy. It's sstewart at redhat.com. Um, so s-s-t-e-w-a-r-t at redhat.com. And I can put you in, in front of uh, the team that onboards instructors. I have a question that says, are the file systems C-E-P-H or Z-F-S on the roadmap for RHEL 7? Z-F-S? Um, let me take that back. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Uh, let me take that back, and I'll, I'll just I'll pull it to one of uh, the guys who uh, who who is uh, on our who writes the curriculum um, for our our senior level administration classes. So let me go back and ask them. Um, so I'll just have Anthony just send that to me, and I'll I'll get you an answer back within 24 hours. Yeah, definitely. And Chris, I'm going to give you Scott's um, uh, email as well. I have a question that says, what will the exam fees be um, to upgrade from RHEL 6 to RHEL 7? So the exams, um, you, you definitely have the ability to buy the exam um, uh, without buying the class, right? So the price, the price is for the uh, RHCSA exam and the RHC exam are $400 a piece. So, you know, those are, um, you, know, you have the ability, like I said, to buy those individually. And um, I'm sure your, your, your account rep at uh, New Horizons could definitely help you with those. What are the average passing scores for the RHCS, or RHCSA and RHCE? Um, you know, it's around 50% for first-time attempts. And, it, you know, there's... There's different scores based off of you know the classes you took before, um, but uh, you know rounded up right, it's around 50% for the first attempts, and the second attempts they go up much higher. You know some of the things we hear from customers all the time is they get stuck on a certain task, um, 
inside the exam that uh, eats up a majority of their time. Uh, and then they go back and practice understanding that those, that's what's going to be asked on the exam for the second, second attempt. Um, and that pass, those pass rates are greater than 80% on the second attempt. Um, you know, like I said, our, our certification exams are, are, are definitely challenging, but they're challenging for a reason. We want, you, we want to make sure that uh, uh, you're able to, to you know, uh, to administer a Red Hat production server. So, you know, the first attempts, it's always, it's a little more challenging on uh, the second attempt. If you fail the first time, you know, you definitely have the, uh, you, you know what's going to be asked of you in the exam, and uh, you can prepare to uh, to look at those you know tasks that may have been more challenging on the first attempt, and and practice on those, and uh, and, and and the likelihood of passing the second second attempt is much higher. Uh, so one of the questions is, um, the current Red Hat cluster training is on RH or, or RHEL seven and RHEL six. So the cluster training right now is currently on Rail 6. Um, our curriculum team are working on that class as we speak uh, to roll that out on Rail 7. Our anticipation that it will be available before Christmas um, to take, uh, so we're talking about RH-436, our clustering um, and, uh, and storage class. So you know, the first one that's going to come out will be the performance tuning, 442 on Rail 7, and then 436 will be you know, quickly behind that. So I just more more information to come, and we'll definitely communicate that out to uh, uh, to New Horizons, uh, so you should, they can let you know when that 436 is available on Rail Seven. When do exams start for Rail Seven? I'm sorry, was that when? What? When? Yeah, correct. Can you repeat that question for me, Anthony? Or have they already? The um, the, te what, the certification exam. The certification exam for seven. Rel Seven. Have they already started, or will they be starting soon? Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, one one thing interesting on the exams. So you know, as you know, Rel Seven launched in the summer. Uh, within. Uh, about two weeks after launch, we were making available the RECSA exam on Rail 7. Within four weeks after launch uh, in, in July, we had the REC uh, exam available on Rail 7. Um, one thing interesting, I talked about uh, very briefly on, on the uh, IES uh, or the individual exam sessions where you can go to a testing center and taste, take the exams. Um, Rail 7 is absolutely, the Rail 7 exams are absolutely available. But we also have the ability, if you took your training, let's say back in the spring on Rail 6, and you want to go and take the exam on Rail 6, um, the Rail 6 exams are still available uh, via individual exam sessions. Uh, so you can definitely, if for those on the phone are looking to take a Rail 6 exam, there is a short window. Um, the window is going to close by the end of the year, and uh, at that point forward, we're only going to be offering Rail 7 exams. So uh, for, for those of you on the phone who may, like I said, that took your, your Rail 6 training uh, back in the spring and are looking to get certified, those certification exams are going to be available for the next 60 days, or 60 to 90 days, via uh, indiv individual exam sessions. So I have two more questions, <clears throat> and one of them is, can you re re uh, repeat the, the fee costs for RHCSA and RHCE exams? Yeah, the exams are $400. Uh, and you know, they're four hundred dollars both for the uh, EX two hundred is a SKU for the RHCSA exam, and four hundred dollars for the EX three hundred the RHC exam. And our final question says, can you please define the most important point that you'd like us to take away from the uh, webinar today? Yeah, it, it's. Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7, uh, Linux is obviously Red Hat's uh, signature product, right? So we, uh, it, from R RHEL 6 release to RHEL 7 release, um, it took us about three and a half years to bring out the new release. And the reason why it took, you know, three and a half years is that we, we wanted to make sure we got a lot of input from, you know, various uh, communities, um, various professionals, but a lot of customers in terms of how do we make RHEL 7 um, 
the best enterprise operating system in the world. So, so like I said, we spent a great deal of time. You know, there's a lot of improvements and a lot, and, and by design to make your jobs easier, system administrators. So, Rail Seven, I encourage you guys to take a look at Rail Seven if you haven't already done so. Um, and look in, and before you look at it, what in conjunction of looking at uh, and, and, and testing on the new operating system, you know, look at the training classes that support the product, right? System admin one, two, and three support, you know, those new changes in Rail Seven, and we train on those on those new products and new enhancements and improvements in our system admin classes. So, um, I encourage you uh, to look at Rail Seven. Uh, you know, we had greater than 3,000 beta customers for Rail 7 working on that in conjunction with Red Hat before launch um, here in North America and, uh, and you know another, and then thousands more across the world who were providing enhancements and improvements. Um, it was really a community driven product, right? So a lot of the you know all the, the beta testing was not done at Red Hat in a in a closed room here in Raleigh, North Carolina, but they were done by customers, by partners, by you know, vendors like uh, hardware vendors like Dell and HP and, and Cisco. Uh, but they're, it, it's really a really good operating system. It's the best operating system with Red Hat's brought out, and it's and and the improvements are not just on the technologies, uh, but it's improvements of the enhancements as you as a system administrator to support that operating system to make your jobs easier. So I'd encourage you to take a look at the at the operating system, which a lot of you guys, if you're you're already that there's already plans to do that. Uh, but uh, in conjunction, you know, the training classes that our system admin one, two, and three, they addressed all the new new changes and enhancements in Rail Seven to make you more effective system administrators. Awesome! Thank you so much, Scott. Uh, I know on behalf of New Horizons, I want to say thank you for your presentation today. And on behalf of the audience, we'd like to give you a round of applause. Uh, Thank you for coming today, everyone. If you want to see the presentation, it'll be going up on our YouTube channel later today. So if you go to youtube.com slash nhsocal, that's N is in new, H is in horizons, SoCal as in Southern California, you'll be able to see a recording of this. And we hope to see you back here soon. We have regular webinars that go on every Thursday. So we hope to see you back on another topic. And have a great afternoon and a great weekend. Thanks, everyone.